another episode of blowing up the cartridges. So we're going to do another cartridge based game again this time. We're going to be doing a disc based game, but I promise the next one will be a cartridge based game. I just have to get all the shit around to be able to record it. And I should have also apologized for the recording delays for this one too. Um, if any of you don't follow me on Twitter or Instagram, I recommend that you would because it's where a lot of my video updates come from. But essentially, we lost our dog Bo a couple weeks ago, or a little while back, I mean. I don't remember the exact time. You'd have to look at my Instagram or my Twitter where I posted it, but we lost Bo. It was, it was a tough time for me. And I'm sorry I wasn't able to record because I was stricken with all that grief, and I also had my mom's memorial I went to, which a lot of us got our closure and whatever, but she's not fully done with yet. And I say that like it's a bad thing. But like, I mean, like, she's not put to rest. Bo is put to rest, but not our, not my mom. So I, I apologize for the delays and everything, but I'm going to start getting a more steady thing as we go. Thanks for sticking with me. So, today's episode, I'm going to ask you guys a question. Do you guys like playing Mario Kart? Do you like Crash Bandicoot? What if you mix the two of them together? <laughs> yeah, Naughty Dog got us covered way back in the 90s. It was called Crash Team Racing. And then Universal did a version of it with, uh, I think it was Universal. Whoever had the license before Activision did a version of it on the PlayStation 2 called Crash Nitro Kart, which... To many, it was terrible, but to some, like me, it was good enough. So I had to suffice with for, you know, a little while. In fact, actually, I enjoyed the shit out of it. I don't know why. It's probably just my younger teenage things of, like, you know, this game's actually kind of decent. But yeah, it wasn't terrible, but it wasn't also, you know, ghost status by any fucking means. Well, what if I told you that it got remade? Not uh, a couple years ago. Crash Team Racing Nitro Fuel is what we'll be reviewing today. The reason why I decided to do Nitro Fuel instead of the original Crash Team Racing is pretty simple. The game's a bit more updated to the point where everything feels a little better handling-wise. Because we not did an amazing fucking job with this game. Literally, this was one game I spent most of my hours on. And it's one of the only games, because there are at least two other ones I can think of right now. Well, two of them. This one and one other one that I'll probably be reviewing somewhere far in the future is the only games I've ever bought multiple times. For clarification, I bought it on PS4, and then during a Black Friday sale, I bought it on the Switch. And I also have it on my Xbox One that we have, that my dad has. Um, but, uh, but the difference on the Xbox One, or not the Xbox One, the Xbox Series X, the difference between the uh, this version and the Series X version is, aside from faster loading times, like on the Switch version, the loading times are atrocious, like they are on PS4 and the other last gen consoles. But on the Series X, I do have the nitrous oxide version, which isn't that big of a difference. But I will be covering that at a later point when I do show off some gameplay for the Series X version and whatnot. So, what made Crash Team Racing Nitro Field so lovable? Aside from, you know, the really great controls, it brought back the feel of the original Crash Team Racing. And then it took all the Crash Team, the Crash Nitro Kart tracks, and threw them in with Crash Team Racing's physics. And it's still just as enjoyable as it, you know, as it could be. I do miss the whole thing where they didn't go anti-gravity like they did back in Crash, Tra Crash Nitro Kart. But even then, that's just all minor complaints in the whole fucking thing, in the whole scheme of things to me. If you really, like, really sit and look at it. One little mechanic was replaced for something different. It's, and even then, it feels a lot better to play with Nitro, with Team Racing's physics on Nitro Kart's tracks than it was playing with Nitro Kart's physics because I will admit, they were a bit bouncy and slippery to me. But when I played Team Racing for all those years, before going back to Nitro Kart to finish it up and get everything unlocked in that game, which I still haven't even completed yet, to this day, it everything just felt bouncy and uncontrollable. It just it was no. Uh, but Nitro Field is actually really great to me. 
That's revealed as probably one of the most anticipated remakes I think I've ever heard of announcements for. The only thing that I don't like about Metro Kart, or Metro Fueled, is a lot of times where people were bitching and complaining about their microtransactions. The problem with the microtransactions are that they were so minute that they weren't looking for any and every reason to bitch about something, is what I felt. Like, I know that at the beginning it seemed kind of unfair. That you could just buy, like, whenever we have announced a data mining, you can buy Nitro. Which we'll be covering that in the Metro Grand Prix section. But even then, the Nitro was only viable at the end of the Nitro Grand Prix things, you know, whatever. And then later on, there was also a couple of updates where the whole thing of microtransactions for Wumpa coins for more characters just became completely pointless. But again, this is just personal opinion to me. You are more than welcome to have your own opinions about anything and everything. I'm not going to say that you can't. That's why game review is always biased. Because this is more or less somebody's opinion versus your opinion. Like, I could say that the game is great and you would think the game is fucking horrible. And you're more than welcome to feel that way. So this is being recorded to like a couple of days, maybe even a week after I've done the uh, talking scenes. But all this figuring play will be recorded on the uh, Series X, Xbox Series X version, uh, Nitrous Oxide Edition. And essentially I'm just going to show you guys a couple of things here and just talk about the game. Like how much of my likes and my dislikes for it and what's really neat with it. Nothing too crazy, I guess you can say. But essentially, like, the game is pretty cool to me. Oh. It's on medium, at least. I'm not the one that set it to that. My, uh, this is the family's Xbox, but I'm using it to record. Because, um, I was going to do PS4 and maybe even Switch. But, um, the load times on those systems are fucking atrocious. Whereas on the Xbox, it's... A lot faster. So I'm just going to do some, like I said, some basic races. Like, I do really enjoy Nitro Field a lot, even though I'm kind of like most people were expecting, I was expecting, you know, some more love to Nitro Kart as well as CTR. Aside from just getting all their tracks. But. I mean, that's not a big, a huge deal, not like a deal breaker to me. Like, I was kind of also hoping to get, like, you know, a Nitro, Nitro Kart story mode. But, like I said, it's not that big of a deal. Um, one thing I do kind of enjoy is that all of the CTR items are back in this game. I just kind of wish that there was... Some of Nitro Fields as well, because Nitro Field had a couple of decent items. They weren't necessarily like terrible. There were some that were questionable, questionable, like the uh, one that freezes, like puts you in a block of ice. <laughs> it's a neat one, but like, um, I think it would have been kind of neat to have seen it in Nitro Field style. Because Beanox did a really amazing can job with this game. Uh, like, I do have, like I said, I'm going to have some more complaints in a little while. In the talking sections. But I will so I'll do my best to kind of fill in the gaps in between. Because I don't remember what all I was saying during these talking sections. But I will be talking about, like, in the next gameplay section, I'll be talking about, like, the uh, the, night, the uh, Grand Prix and some of the characters he introduced with those and all the other really neat shit. And then I'll be talking about some time trials. At the very end of the uh, last gameplay section, I might have some more details as far as maybe what we're going to be doing with cra uh, streams and shit. Because I do have an idea for a stream series, or even just a regular YouTube series, depending on 
how badly it's really wanted. That pretty much is just um, this game. But we won't be playing like online mode or anything because I don't even know if the servers are still even active since the last update of the game. Like I'm not saying that the servers were shut down. Just more or less, I'm not sure if anyone even plays online anymore. Oop. I fucked that up. Uh, but how you do this is you gotta jump, air brake, turn. And then not fall off the fucking bridge when you get over here. But it's okay, I'm so far I use computer players and I'm just doing this for, for fun. I'm not, I'm not playing online. I don't play online in this game. I'm fucking terrible in online games anyway. But yeah, like, the game is very smooth, and the game looks fucking amazing for being, uh, even, like, PS4 generation hardware. Like, not to say that PS4 generation was bad, and, like, graphic-wise, because it had some pretty good-looking games. But, I'm not really sure what I'm really going for with this, but it's, it's neat nonetheless. We'll put it that way. And then I'll see you guys in the next section here. How about the Nitro Grand Prix? The Nitro Grand Prix kind of came to the game at the beginning of its life, actually. So at the beginning of the game's development, we had been told that we were going to be getting a Nitro Grand Prix every you know designated time spot. Like, we had stuff like the Twilight Tour, which gave us the Nitro Girls and Tana as playable characters, if you were willing to buy them in the vault with them stored in the, the, the crash, the pit stop, that's what they called them, the storage pit stop. You buy them in the pit stop, if you get enough Nitro, you can unlock Tana, you can unlock all sorts of different carts and combinations and stuff like that. That's what's really innovative about Nitro Kart, or team, uh, Nitro Fuel. Nitro Fuel gives you that feeling like you're playing Mario Kart 8, but with Crash Bandicoot characters, because you can customize your cart. So you have different bodies, different paint jobs, different decal jobs, different stickers. It's a wide variety of customization, and it's quite honestly one of my favorite features of Nitro, of Nitro Fuel, if I can be completely honest with you. Because it makes you feel unique when you're playing online. Like, you have an identifiable thing of you, you know, you're playing as Embryo with the Team Cortex car and all that other good shit. Well, then, you know, we later on we had stuff like the, uh, what was the, uh, Freestork Playground, and there was Gingerbread Joyride, the, uh, the, uh, Drive Through Danger. Spyro had a circuit where we actually got to play as, we had the ability to uh, play as Spyro, Hunter, and Gnasty Gnork, which I think was fucking awesome. Because Spyro was in the GBA port of, of uh, Nitro Kart. But not in the PS2 port. So just seeing Spyro as playable in Crash Team Racing again was awesome. Or in Crash Team was awesome. Because Spyro and Crash there for a long time when Naughty Dog and Insomniac respectively owned both the IPs. Um, or developed games for the characters. They did have a lot of references to each other through crossing, through crossing over. Like Nitro Kart had a demo to play Spyro 2 Ripto's Rage. And then Ripto's Rage... Had a demo to play Crash Bash. <clears throat> it's it's all cool. Like, yeah, like I don't really know how to really, like, whatever. Then we had like Nina's Nightmare, which brought back Nina into the game, which brought Nina Cortex into the game. Uh, Cortex's niece, um, and Komodo Mo, because we had Komodo Joe as a playable character, just not Mo. But um, eventually there was a big thing with engine swaps later that came in a later update. So an engine sw uh, the engine swap pretty much made it to where any character can be any kind of like engine that you want to in the game. Because there are three types of engine in the original. There was the speed type engine, which are primarily focused on going fast, not so much of your acceleration, your mini turbos, and they're tough at handling at times. They get to be kind of advanced to know how to handle a speed type character, I guess. And then there are the acceleration based, which focus more on mini turbos and boosting through turbos in general as opposed to their speed and handling. And then there are turn-based engines 
which focus more on being able to be handled well as opposed to every other stat. And they're also mostly played for people who are beginners of the game. Like, I'm not saying that you can't play any of these engines as a different type of, like, player. Because each of them can perform very well. I'm not saying that, you know, you have to be a certain player to be good enough with any of these engines. Because like I said before, a player that can play speed engines could do really good as a could do really good as a turn based engine, or even turn based engines could do somewhat decent as a acceleration engine. And then there, in the engine swap update, they gave us the drift engine, which I think focuses mostly on speed and turning with a little bit of acceleration. I don't know the exact statistics of this shit. I know that there are four different types of engines, and the drift engine was one of my favorite ones. Although I used to do, I used to main Polar before the engine swap thing had even happened. Like I literally played through Polar, used Polar to play through all of the uh, campaign, and then I use Crash on the Nitro Fuel version of the campaign, which is also kind of fun. Fun thing to also mention is that there's another. Uh, well, I'll mention more of that in the in the version differences, aside from the obvious version differences. All right. Alright, so as far as, like, the updates with uh, the Nitro Tours went, we had, like, a Twilight Tour, which gave us the Nitro Girls, which was, like, Liz, Megumi, Tana, and... I think one of them is Amy? I can't remember the, I can't remember the other, other ones, but... They were the four, like, Trophy Girls in Nitro and CTR Story Mode. The original CTR Story Mode. And they added Tana because she was absent since Crash 1. And in lore, it was said that Tana had dumped Crash for uh, Pinstrapelli Padarui. Which, uh, I don't know. Uh, then there was Prehistoric Playground, which gave us a really fucking awesome Entropy skin. Um, well, no, it's not a uh, really completely fucking awesome Entropy skin. It's a neat Entropy skin. Uh, I think they gave us one for Fate Crash, which is another something I'll have to cover when it comes to the skins. We'll get to that in just a few. These updates past uh, Twilight, to Twilight Tour gave characters skins, which is what made things kind of unique. Uh, we also got introduced to Baby T, and I think it was Baby Crash in Skins Cup. I can't remember who, what all came in this one. Spyro Circuit gave us Spyro, Hunter, Gnasty Gnork, and a couple of Spyro-themed uh, cars. And some really neat Spyro skins. Uh, Nina's Nightmare brought in Nina Cortex, uh, Dr. Embryo, and Komodo Mo. Because Komodo Joe is in the game, just Mo is not. Originally. I uh, gave us a couple of cart combinations as well, which I was, I was using a couple of those cart combinations. Because I do have them in this save file. But I do have a lot more on my uh, on my Switch save. Uh, I just like, I don't play on my Switch save anymore that much because it's slow. Like I said, Koala Carnival gave us Koala Kong. Uh, I believe it was also Pasadena Opossum and Abekanizer von Clutch from uh, Crash Tag Team Racing, and Koala Kong was from the original Crash Bandicoot on PlayStation One. Uh, Gingerbread Joyride gave us. Uh, I think in Koala Cart was it Koala Kart? No, it was this. It was Gingerbread Joyride that gave us a uh, chicken stew. The two now commentators from uh, Crash Tag Team Racing. It also gave us uh, a reindeer character. I cannot remember his name for the save of my life. I have him unlocked on uh, my Switch save. I just don't remember what his fucking name is. Um, and then gave us some cart combos like the Nitro Sled and a couple other ones. Uh, Mega Mix Mania gave us Mega Mix, which I do mention this in my uh, talking portion. But if you don't know who the fuck Mega Mix is, he is exclusive to Crash. Well, he was in. He was introduced in Crash Team Adventure as a secret ending boss, and then he was playable in Crash Two Entrance in multiplayer mode. So he's very obscure, only ever in two games. And then he became a debut character for the Grand Prix in Nitro Fueled. And he is, also has a cameo appearance in Crash Force about time. Uh, Drive Through Danger gave us 
uh, the fake Emperor Villo, the 27th, who is from Nitro Kart. He's the main antagonist of that game. He's one of my favorite characters. I would I always really, really liked um, fucking Emperor v uh, the fake Emperor Velo. And Rio Velo is also playable in this version. Another version difference when it comes to like uh, Crash Team Racing and Crash Nitro Kart is that all the uh, well, here we got like Entropy. So here to like show you guys some things with the skin. So we have like regular entropy, we have quartz colored, carbon fiber, purple. Uh, there's this exclusive skin here for digital. You have to beat all of nitrous oxide's time trial modes in both Nitro Kart and the Crash Team Racing uh, time trials. They are a fucking bitch to do. And I've only ever done it one time. All of them. I do have some on my PlayStation 4 file, and with this file here on my uh, on the Xbox Series X, or I might even do it on my Switch for a stream series, is uh, the uh, it's called the Oxide Grind. But if you guys really want to, I'll do all of Entropies first, and then do all of Oxides for like a series where you guys watch me fucking rage and nearly break controller trying to beat all of Oxides times. Because there is one track in particular I struggle the absolute most with. Because it is the worst track in this fucking game. To do time trial modes on. And that's Dragon Mines. And like I said, I beat it one time. I've done every track in this game one time for all of Oxide's Ghosts. And I've never done it again. Because I hate the fact of how much time it takes and how much of a grind it fucking is. But I'm only going to do it for content if people are willing to work and watch it. And then the Stone Age Entropy is unlocked. It was actually an unlockable in this Grand Prix. But it's also now purchasable in the store. Uh, down here is Mega Mix from Mega Mix Mania. He's a combination of Engine, Dr. Cortex, or uh, Dr. Neo Cortex, um, Tiny Tiger, and Dingo Dial. If you guys want to know more about the lore, go watch the whole thing about... Go watch uh, Catacris's playthrough of The Huge Adventure, or just watch some kind of video that talks about Mega Mix, because I don't want to spoil too much of, like, how he came to be, and where he is now, because I, said, I, I fucking love Mega Mix. He looks really cool in the Nitro, uh, the Nitro Fuel style. We got Toxic Mega Mix, you got Red Templar Mega Mix, you have Nightmare Mega Mix, which some of these you unlock through playing races, which is neat. And then for legendary skins, we have the Rustland Mega Mix, which is from the Rustland Rust Land Grand Prix. And then there's Beanock Rustland. Which I think is just kind of shitty. So if you had Rustland Mega Mix before the final update came out. Beanox Wrestling Mega Mix would be completely free. But if you don't own Wrestling Mega Mix before the Beanox update, the final update came out, this Beanox, this a skin that actually had to buy, they had to wait till the skin trip up in the pit stop and buy it. Another thing about um, the Nitro Stockside version, the reason why I bought it on my Series X, not on my Series, on the Series X, is because um, Crunch has a legendary skin that is Robot Crunch. This is only available in Nitrous Oxide Edition. Literally, the 10 extra bucks you spend just to get this fucking skin almost does not feel worth it. Granted, it doesn't give you just the skin. There are a couple other things you do get from that, from uh, purchasing it, I mean. Uh, so you got like Dirt Bike Crunch, you got Racer Crunch, and then you have some uh, alternate skins. But Evil Crunch, I think this is based off of... Uh, I want to say it was based off of uh, fucking Entranced because Crunch is brainwashed to be an Entranced to try to hit the hate crash, try to kill him. Uh, they got 24 hour race crunch, uh, racer crunch, and you got racer la crunch. <laughs> I never noticed this one, it's fucking hilarious. And you got like a crunch, and you have like Dalmatian, Rottweiler, some really neat skins. Uh, the PlayStation 4 version does have some exclusive skins for Crash, Coco, and Vortex. Or these Crash and Coco I know of, where they have like their uh, a callback to their polygonal styles on the PlayStation. Which is a very awesome callback, because 
the only other Activision game that does this, to my knowledge, was uh, Thug 1, or was it, it was either Thug 1 or Thug 2, um, you could unlock a skin for Tony Hawk, PlayStation 1 Tony Hawk, like the original Tony Hawk on the old gen consoles. For me, it would be the N64, but the original Tony Hawk 1 was... It was pretty much the same across all platforms. There might have been a couple of differences on the 64, aside from, you know, some gap game changes. That's really about it. Um, there's also a special thing that I had for my PlayStation 4 version where there's a code you can redeem to get some specialty skins exclusively for Cortex Crash and Coco. But, like I said, the polygonal pattern crash is not available on Xbox or any other version. But, um, you got, like, Star Crash here. You got... Electron Crash. I think Electron Crash was the skin I exclusive skin on the uh, PlayStation 4 version I bought because I bought this game on launch on PS4, and then I bought the Switch version on a Black Friday sale, and then I bought this version a little while back when we first got the Series X because I was really looking for a reason I ceased to pick up this game again because it's been too damn long, and I really wanted to see if the load times were better on Xbox, and they are. Like I refuse to play the PlayStation 4 again. Like, I'm still going to, but, you know, if I had my choice of it, I'd rather play this one. Then, uh, yeah, if you have Aviator Crash, it's legendary skin here. Um, you get the Binox Aviator Crash for free. We got, like, Scuba Crash, we got Biker, Arcade Aviator, Space Aviator, Rustland, which I do like the Rustland one, it's really neat. Reindeer Crash, which came in the Christmas update, which is where we got the, uh, the Nitro Sled and shit. The Mad Scientist Crash, which came, I believe, in Nina's Nightmares update. Um, but yeah, some characters do have legendary, like a couple legendary skins of their own, like Crash here. Of course, some of these are reskins. But then you got fucking Coco, who's got the most legendary skins of all characters. Like, legit. I would have been just fine if they stopped here. But they had to give her one for fucking the evil Coco because of, you know, Entrance. We have Beach Coco because I believe, I believe it was, uh, I believe it was, uh, the, I think it was not a tag team racing that this was in. Because I know that she had, I think it was actually it was Princess Coco when tag team racing introduced her. Uh, there's also like Rustland Coco, which is really neat. Elf Coco because of the Christmas update. And then there's Alice Coco. Which I do really like this skin, but I really honestly think Dark Coco is the best skin because this came in the Nina's Nightmare update. It was a skin I literally gunned for to get. Um, Ripper Roo has a couple of his own, like Mad Scientist and the fucking Bedtime and the Gentleman Ripper Roo. <laughs> I like this one. Uh, I believe this is actually the skin he actually, or what he looks like in uh, Crash 2 during his boss fight. If you like, whenever you like, you show up at his place and he jumps on the TNTs and he just goes mad and starts pop, dropping down nitros. Uh, we got Polar. Like, all the original characters here are playable. All the way up to Fake Crash, because if you remember the original game's roster, it was everything from Crash to Fake Crash and Penta Penguin was unlockable by a cheat code, which the same cheat code unlocks Penta Penguin in this version. Just about every cheat code from the original version works on this game, with the exceptions of, unlo of the Unlock Entropy cheat code and the uh, Spyro 2 demo. The Spyro demo. I don't know if it was Spyro 2 or not. But there is the Spyro demo code does not work. Neither does the Unlock Entropy code. You need... Uh, like Penta Penguin's code unlocks. Works. That's the only way you can unlock Penta Penguin in the game. For whatever reason, Penta Penguin has legendary skins and skins that you can buy in the pit stop. But they're not available to buy it to you until you've unlocked Penta Penguin to begin with. Like, make that make fucking sense. The fucking Samurai Penta is so neat. Or the Ninja Penta. Ninja Samurai. And they're, they're not the same thing. I was gonna say, I was gonna say, Ninja Samurai is the same thing. No, they're not the same fucking thing. They are way different from another. Uh, and Nitrous Oxide, surprisingly, is an unlockable character in this game. So back in the original, Nitro's Oxide was not unlockable. There was actually a theory that somebody, or that 
go around the uh, playgrounds was if you beat all nitrous oxides time trial ghosts you unlock nitrous oxide but all you do is unlock the scrapbook which i think is a fucking terrible reward because you literally busted your ass to beat every track as fast as possible just to get a fucking scrapbook of concept art wow and then there's entry there's a dr entropy which is only unlockable beating all of his time trial ghosts which I mean, it makes it seems it makes sense that entropy would be unlocked behind time trial ghosts and why his skins would be available to purchase. It just doesn't make sense to me with Penta because he's locked behind a fucking cheat code. Because at least with entropy, when your cheat code is no longer active, he's not like the cheat code is doesn't work anymore. Whenever or it works, but he leaves your system memory whenever you turn off your game. But if you beat all of his time trial ghosts, he stays. Unlocked in the original. The only way you can unlock entropy and this one is a beat all his time trial ghosts. Uh, Geary, Crunk, uh, it's Geary, Crunk, Big Norm, Little Norm, and uh, Big Velo, Emperor Velo are all playable, even though they were not in um, Nitro Kart, which I think is really fucking cool. They also brought back Zim and Zam, who are uh, characters from Nitro Kart, who are kind of just forgotten about. But I believe they are, like, the cousins, or they're related to Nitrous Oxide in some way from Gas Moxia. Uh, they're, like, there because they're cheaters in Nitro Kart. But if you bought the Nitrous Oxide version, you unlock Nitrous Oxide early, you unlock both Zim and Zam early, and you unlock the robot skin for Crunch. Uh, that's the only difference that you get through your $10 difference of your versions. But, honestly, it's not really even worth the, the, the $10 after you really think about it, because after, like, the Nina's, Nina's Nightmare update, all of the characters are now no longer, like, locked behind certain engines. They can all be whatever engine you want them to be. They pretty much show that. You go down here's driving style, you can have drifts, or you can have his regular one, which is turn. You can have him on turn style, you can have him on balance style, you can have him on acceleration style, and you can have him on speed style or drift style. I personally really like the drift style stats, but that's, you know, my preference. I used to like the classic style, the turn, the turn style. I used to really like playing the turn style because Polar was my favorite character in the original game. But even then, you can play anyone you fucking want to. It's not. I'm not gonna tell you you can't. Yeah, here we got like DBT. He's one of my favorite characters because he's adorable as fuck. King Chicken. He's an unlockable character who was hidden behind us. A unlock method is introduced in one of the later updates. Essentially, you have to find five golden eggs in the overworld of the adventure mode. And when you uh, find them, all you have to take them to a shrine. And when you put them in the shrine. You unlock King Chicken as a playable racer. I believe he's in reference to the chicken jokes from Tag Team Racing. But I don't know or can confirm. Uh, but we also have, you know, Baby Entropy, who's a newer character introduced here. He's based off of the... The secret ending to Crash 3. Uh, Iron Checkpoint Crate was the very last character ever introduced in the game. He came in the, uh, it came in the Beanox update. So, you're probably asking yourself, what the fuck does this crate, like, what the fuck does this Iron Checkpoint Crate have to do with fucking anything? That's what we didn't understand either. But essentially, if you play the, the checkpoint crate, you can get it as like a question mark, a TNT, a nitro, or a purple exclamation point, which purple exclamations, I think, were a thing from Crash Bash? I don't remember. It's, I haven't played Crash Bash in a long while, and it's a mediocre game anyway. Um... Yeah, they don't have all the characters like Krunk, Small and Big Norm, who are bosses, and, and Nash. That's what his name was, Nash. 
and Geary were all race were all uh, boss races in Nitro Nitro Kart. Entrance was a playable character in Nitro Kart. He bra he's from uh, Crash Two Entrance. He brainwashed. Uh, Coco and Crunch and Fake Crash to hate Crash try to kill him, and then in um, Nitro Kart, his team consists of Dingo Dial, Pura or Pura, and Polar, because he brainwashed them to try to race against Crash, try to, you know, whatever. It's really weird. Lower then there's Real Velo. When you beat him, you unlock him as a playable character to race alongside um, Nitro Side in the original Crash Nitro Kart. But you can be whatever the fuck you want to in this game, I guess. <laughs> you got Tana, Amy, Megumi, Liz, and Isabella. They also introduced Baby Coco and Baby Crash, I think, in the uh, Christmas update. Ganasta Ganork, Spyro. Hunter, Komodo Mo, Embryo, Nina, Koala Kong, Ebuchadnezzar Von Clutch, uh, Pasadena Opossum, Rillaroo. When this one dropped, everyone hated it so badly that Beanox, uh, Yaya Panda from Crash Nitro Kart 2, Hey Steve from the, uh, the Christmas update, Chick, Stu from Tag Team Racing, Real Velo, Lab Assistant from the Crash Games, Baby Cortex, and then they everybody hated Redler Roo's original model they put in so much, they made a fixed version which is based more off of the Crash Bash Redler Roo. I personally don't like Redler Roo that much, so I don't really give a shit what kind of skins you give him, so just go ahead. Uh, so if your carts, they do a new thing here. So in carts, you have one or two options. You have a regular basic body build like these, like Classics and Team Cortex, Team Trance, Team Oxide. And the Nitro Slay is a hovercraft-based car. So hovercraft cars, like the hovercraft itself here, and the Nitro Slay don't have wheels. Oh, and then the final update, they give us the Cog, which is a really neat hovercraft car. But you don't have wheels, so you have one last customization option available to you. As if you were, you know, not playing with... If you're going to play normally. I mean. Like, all these here have, like, the wheels on them. The Six Pipes card came in the night, and the Amita's update. Really cool. Roadster. The Imperium. The Champion, you only get if you beat all of Nitrous Oxide's times. You know, the bonus syllables of the game. Plus the originals of C and K and CTR, uh, Rocket, Mammoth, Nostalgenator, the Probulot 2000, Skull Rider. This is a really cool one too. The Nautilus. Oh, this one. I used to race a lot with this one on deep sea driving. Dragonfly, the Ganasty Ride, Spiral Mobile. This is a really cool one too. Uh, Phantom, this is the one I really, really like. I really, really love how this car looks. Pressurizer, Nitro Bumper, Snow Plower, Candy Cane, or Candy Cone. But yeah, the, uh, the, the Graphic Cruiser, the Velo Chopper. This was one I was also really excited to see because I remember seeing uh, Fig Velo use this one in his like race. It's not the same exact one, it's a bit bigger. And I always wanted to use that car so badly, but there was never an option to use it in the actual game. The Desert D Duster, which was in the Mega Mix Mania. The Dusty Rider. Uh, the Void Manta. And the Neon Hawk. This was a really cool one, too. Biggest game in the in the Cola Kong update. The Circus update. Uh, there's the wheels options, which... And we got Cry uh, all these different wheels. Uh, some wheels are like legendary, where they'll have like a uh, effect on the wheels. Because you guys saw how the how these wheels operate in my last race there. But uh, in the final Beanox update, they gave us these, which are the Beanox wheels, which have a really cool effect on them. Uh, there is another set of wheels that are in the final Beanox update. 
I do not have because I don't really hate myself enough to get them. I don't have enough time to get them either. I gotta figure out where they are. But they're a very, very hard to obtain set of wheels. Uh, maybe they're hidden. But there is a set of wheels uh, you can unlock if you are to beat the entirety of all of the dev ghosts, which we'll be talking about the ghosts here in a sec, here in the next play, uh, play, uh, play section. But yeah, you have like different customizations for colors for your cars too, which is really freaking cool. I do like the idea of how many colors there actually are and how some colors actually have a really neat effect on them. Like, look at that. It's so cool. Uh, like, some of the colors too, like this one's really neat too. I like this one. Uh, they got like bright neon colors, and then you have like some that are just kind of like. Wow. There's some really neat colors here. But in all honesty, none of this shit really even matters unless you really want to take it up online and stuff. Uh, special cards, I don't have any because there's. There are also stickers for customization. Uh, like, they got a bunch of these different ones down here with like symbols. They also have some that are based completely around Grand Prix. Or the like updates, I should say. And they've got like some character specific ones. Yeah, like a lot of it's neat. Like special carts too are carts that can't be customized. They're like specifically built standard. There is about a couple of them that I know of. Like there is a set of special carts based original uh, based around the original design of the cars. They have the same like poly polygonal look to them. It's goes to the PlayStation version. Uh, there is DLC carts. Like one of them is like a bomber plane, which is really neat looking. Um, and then there's one for Xfinity, but I don't use Xfinity Internet. I have frontier so i don't have access to that didn't have access to the code when they were available at the time so that's one of the special part you get a hold of it's a really neat looking car just like i said you had to have you had to have had xfinity internet for even a chance to get a hold of it was the fucking issue so now that all that's like done with talking about that like um let me show you the whole thing with time trials. So with time trials, you have generally you have three ghost options. So your first ghost option is going to be Doctor Entropy here, and then you have Nitrous Oxide's ghosts. But what happens if you beat Nitrous Oxide's ghosts? You unlock Emperor Velo's ghosts. What happens if you beat Velo's ghosts? You unlock Developer Time Trial ghosts. I am not kidding with you. There are three sets of fucking ghosts. Because, heaven forbid, you stop after nitrous oxide. Although, canonically, Velo is the fastest racer in the galaxy, as Nitro Kart has shown us, because he has kidnapped everyone else to show that he is the fastest, and if he wins, whatever. There are four sets of ghosts. I have never even done all of Velo's ghosts. I know that they're not fucking worth it, so I'm not gonna fucking do them. I will also not be doing any of the developer time trial ghosts because I do not hate myself enough, nor do I have enough fucking time to do those either. Not even for a YouTube or streaming series. Unless it does really, really well with the Oxide Grind. I might consider it. Keyword, might. <laughs> because, like I said... These are fucking horrendous. When you get to do these ghost mode, ghosts. Oh yeah, and you can't play any track on mirror mode. It doesn't matter if you win on mirror mode or not. There's no special thing that you get for beating all of them on mirror mode. It's just if you prefer doing this, doing the track back on the like inverted side, inverted option of the track, just you have that. Um, that's pretty much it for this gameplay section. Talking about version differences. When we're talking about version differences, we're going to talk about not only the Crash Team Racing differences, but also what's different between the Nitrous Oxide version and the standard version.
So let's talk about the differences between CTR and CTR Nitro Fuel. The CTR Nitro Fuel, as you know, is an updated version of the game, basically, with all the Nitro Kart tracks and all of the DLC, or the, uh, not DLC tracks, because there was no DLC, technically. There was special carts, but I don't really count that as actual DLC. I don't have all the carts to be able to show them off. But um, I will make brief mention of them, and if I can find some screenshots online, I'll throw them in and give credit to the people I stole them from. Or borrowed them from. I don't steal, I borrow. I do credit them always, because you kind of have to. That's a big fucking thing, you know? You can't just claim that you have something, whatever. You guys get the fucking point. Anyway, aside from that, there was a little, there was another difference in like for the campaign. So, in standard campaign of the Nitro Fueled thing, or in standard campaign of Crash Team Racing, there was this whole thing where you would play progressively getting tougher tracks and bosses and everything in AI as you continue through the game. Well, Natural Field has a Natural Field version where you can actually swap between characters and car customizations as you play the game. If you don't like playing as a turn-based character, you can switch to acceleration or even a drift engine or a speed engine. It's honestly a pretty unique thing for people who are just not getting used to how to play Crash Team Racing. Another big difference is, is that um, the bosses. So in the original uh, Crash Team Racing, there you could play as a big handful of Crash characters, which I think were Crash, Engine, Dingo Dial, Dingo Dial, Tiny, Cortex, Coco, Polar, and Pura or Pura, however it's pronounced. Might be missing. I think it was that. Yeah, I think it was actually a. I, mean, I think there's actually maybe eight or ten on the main roster. Anyway, so the other unlockable characters were Pinster Pelly, Potteroo, um, Ripperoo, Papu Papu, and Komodo Joe. But if you also got all the gems in the game, which require you to play tracks again to get the tokens, to get the tracks, to get the gems, you could unlock Fake Crash. Nitrous Oxide was not playable in the game, but he was his debut game. In Nitro Fueled, if you beat the entirety of the campaign, the first time, you unlock Nitrous Oxide as a playable character alongside all the bosses beforehand and even the ability to unlock Fake Crash. Another difference is that not all the cheat codes from the original game work in Nitro Fueled. Only a handful of them do. Like the unlock entropy code, I think there was one back in the original. It doesn't work in, the, in Nitro Kart. Or Nitro Fueled if there was one. But the Penta Penguin Unlock Code does work because that's from that game. And Penta Penguin is a playable character in this game too. He's a hidden character somewhere, but you're locked behind cheat code. But it's actually unlo it's the only way you can actually unlock Penta Penguin in Nitro Fueled, which feels weird because of the fact that whenever you do unlock Penta, he has customization options of skins and such in the friggin' pit stop. Like you have to have a cheat code to unlock a character who has stuff in the pit stop that probably isn't even accessible to you to unlock the character anyway. <laughs> it's just, it's a fucked up thing there. Uh, to me, at least, you know. Um, another difference was... So there was one other difference. Oh yeah, there was also the whole thing where now characters have different skins. Which, if we're being entirely honest with you, if we're being entirely honest, the skin thing doesn't really matter unless you want a certain look on a character, which I have a main complaint about the character skins too. My problem with the character skins is that a lot of them went to Coco as opposed to other characters that could have definitely rocked more of those skins. Like, I'm not saying Coco is necessarily a terrible character because he has more skin than everyone else does, because the Dark Coco skin was definitely one of my favorite skins. The Witch Tana one was also one of my favorite ones. Um, and then in the final update, a lot of characters, some characters like Geary, got his first fucking skin that was legendary ranked, which was the Beanox Geary. And then there was one given to Mega Mix, who only had one legendary skin before that, which was uh, Rustland. Mega Mix, which if anyone doesn't know who Mega Mix is, he's the final. He's technically the final final boss of Crash: The Huge Adventure. Um, he's a mixture of Dingo Dino, 
single dial tiny cortex and engine. But there's, I think there was like some kind of different lore made for him in Nitro Kart to where he, or Nitro Fueled, where he was like a toxic waste thing where they all mixed together. Either way, it's really nice to see Mega Mix actually get a reference back because some characters are just come and go. But yeah, like the main difference is you can unlock Nitrous Oxide and Nitro Fuel. And Nitrous Oxide also has skins. He has a legendary skin locked behind getting 106%, which if you don't know how to get 106%, you have to get all the crystals, not, not the crystals, you have to get all the seeker tokens, all the, all the gems, all the trophies, all the relics, platinum rank relics, or at least gold or, gold or better, I'm not pretty sure. Let's close my phone. It's kind of important. Um, like platinum, or gold or better, get your 106% uh, rank. And then there's the whole thing with Entropy, which stayed the same throughout all of the Crash Racing games. To unlock Entropy, you have to beat all of this Ghost in Time Trial mode, which is in re which is kind of like neat in its theory, because in reference, it reminds me a lot of TT the Clock, because Crash Cove was actually Crest Island from Diddy Kong Racing that they remade into Crash Cove. It was built by the idea of Diddy Kong Racing, one of my favorite fucking racing games of all time. Yes, that will be a video eventually, but it's not the next one. The next one's another one of my favorite games of all time. It's not Diddy Kong Racing. <coughs> Sorry about that. And then that's pretty much all the differences, except for the fact that you know we introduced the hover car, cra uh, the hovercraft car, whatever. It's just a cart. That's a cart option. Not, nothing like majorly important to have to know when it comes to the differences between the two versions. Um, there's also another thing, another thing where there's a legendary skin for entropy, but I'm going to cover that in the gameplay section that's coming up next. In between these, you know, cuts before I get my final final view and whatever, but um, uh, there is another big difference between the all right. So then it's time to cover the difference between the nitrous oxide version and the standard version of the game. So in the standard version of the game, you have your base game and everything is you know prerequisite to un uh, prerequisite to unlock through that through natural ways, being able to fight for the pit stops, unlocking it through beating in boss races, unlocking it through getting certain achievements within the game. Or, you know, Penta Penguin's cheat code, whatever kind of bullshit floats your boat. In the Nitrous Oxide version, you can actually cut a little bit on the unlockables by paying an extra, uh, I think it's like 10 or 20 bucks on top of the base game price. And you'll unlock Nitrous Oxide, the Hovercraft Car Customization option, Zim and Zam, and you'll unlock Crush Bandicoot with a skin that is a robot, Red Robot Crunch. Exclusive to nitrous oxide version of the game. Literally. I have played the PS4 version and seen that thing pop up in so many local races in the arcade that I wondered how the fuck do I get this skin for it to be a virgin fucking exclusive. All platforms that can carry the nitrous oxide version have this fucking skin available to you. Literally. You're paying extra fucking money for a skin that when it pops up in your PS4 local arcade races, the game will reset itself saying that there was an error that occurred through online. Which, yeah, that's another stupid thing. Because the game requires you to be online at all times to be able to get any kind of bump of coin throughout your races. If you play through offline, you're not going to get any fucking thing for winning. Not even if you busted your ass and did so perfectly immaculate that the AI character submit to your fucking, like, skill. You do not get a goddamn coin if you don't have any internet connection to play this game. That is my one massive complaint Aside from the fact that Coco gets more skins than everyone else in the fucking game. And the problem is that the game is not updating anymore. 
so that there's no more chances for any more characters to come. There's no more chances for anyone else to get any more skins. There's no chances for any other DLC, any like tracks, not even a Nitro Kart campaign, which a lot of people were wanting to see happen before the game completely stopped everything altogether. None of it happened. The game has pretty much just been back to life. If there's an online community for it, that's awesome. I don't play online myself because I am fucking terrible. But this game is alright. So we're going to cut to the uh, gameplay section here and then I'm going to give my final thoughts on the game. Alright, I think maybe I'll just talk a little bit about the uh, adventure mode here. So, as you can see here with the adventure mode, it's definitely its own little thing. But, um... They do take reference to uh, Crash 3 with these, which I think is really neat. Like, you have all the colored gems, which have their own little gem cups you can do. Um, but each track... Oh, I already got all these here. Each track has its own little thing in it that is for a time trial relic race. Now, I myself am not a big fan of the time trial relics because I think that they're just a kind of pointless piece of padding. Like... Why do we have to go back and do the level again when we've already done everything for that level as it is? It's the same kind of point when you have against Crash Bash because you have to, you know, replay the levels over and over with different stipulations for different uh, item collect different collectibles like relics and trophies and stuff. But at least it feels kind of rewarding with Nitro Kart. So yeah, see here we have the time trial relics floating around in there, which is really neat. I wanted to start a new file, but my problem being is that if I started a new one, it would have taken a long time to be able to get to that point where they're going to explain to you what a time trial relic is and what a CTR token is. And there's also boss races here, which I guess I wasn't intending to show the boss race here, but we'll do it. And then at the end of the episode, at the end here... I'll show you guys like some quick shortcuts and shit. Since I've already explained the differences, we pretty much covered most of my talking points. So boss races are unique. And it's for the fact that whenever you're racing a boss, they have an infinite amount of items. But they will drop one specific type of item the entire race through. So for Papu Papu, he chooses the beakers. But, as from what I remember, all boss races are unique to their items. So, like, Ripperoo could drop nothing but TNTs and Nitros. I swear to God, this race actually isn't that hard. I, this is, like, the easiest race in the game next to Ripperoo. But, um... As far as I am aware, all bosses have their own pool for items. And you only ever race the CTR bosses. Like, there's no Nitro Fuel, bo no Nitro Kart bosses, which is kind of sucky because I would have loved, loved to have seen a remake of Norman uh, Geary's boss races. Because Norman Geary were the two boss races on Nitro Kart that gave me the most fucking trouble. So, seeing a remake of their uh, races would have been amazing. And, by the way, like I said before, I do not struggle at all with this race. I do not know why I'm doing so badly here. Yeah, I I think it's because I'm recording. <laughs> I'll try one more time, and if I can't get the boss race on this one, I'll just say fuck it. I don't know why I was doing so terrible there, but... Yeah, the, uh, the bosses can take other item boxes... They won't get anything out of their other items. They will, like I said, they will defaultly only have one, only ever have one item pool. The only exception is Nitrous Oxide, but that's because he's the final boss race. And both the first and second time, his item pools is bullshit, or his items that he's gonna throw at you are bullshit. But here's a shortcut you can, you know, use uh, for Papu Papu's uh, Papu's Pyramid. On uh, the Entropy and Oxide races. And I do believe that the Ghost... Yeah, the the uh, Entropy Ghost actually shows you how to do the trick. 
if you were like falling behind it. Because I was a total fucking noob when I picked this game up on PlayStation 4. Because for the longest while, I would play normally and I would see all these different like characters and races and shit. Characters and racers and shit. On these uh, tracks. And I would not know how to like even play with Entropy or how to do certain things that tra characters are doing. So I like picked up the controller and started learning how to do the time trial races because the entropy races actually gave me a lot of trouble when I first started naturally because they are the first set of races or first set of ghosts in the game they are going to be kind of a pain in the ass if you're like still newer like me at that time but I would like fall behind just to watch the ghosts race on the track so I could mimic how they do theirs and that's how I learned how to do that trick. There are other tracks that do have shortcuts. I showed you guys the very first one. The very first gameplay bit. I showed you guys how to do the shortcut on Electron Avenue. Where you like you jump and you air brake and skid or do a do a fucking quick 180 real quick and then zoom like that. Uh that's one of them. There are a few tracks that do have shortcuts. There are some that are faster than others. But for the last bit of gameplay footage, I will be showing you guys some of the shortcuts and some tips and tricks on how you can do better, how you can beat Entropy Ghosts if you're struggling with them. And like I said, if you guys want to see an Entropy Ghost series and you want to see an Oxide Grind series, be sure to let me know in the comments section or just drop a bunch of likes in this video because I want to know if you guys really do enjoy CTR content, you guys would like to see something like that. And if servers are active and online, I'll even do a couple of videos where I go online and play. Hey, so final thoughts in the game. I personally think it's actually really fucking good. I know a lot of people were thinking my last session were the last section before the last gameplay but, but there. But me complaining about the fact that there's going to be no more updates to the game and also their shit. No, it's a bad thing. It's a bad game. Right? Now, I could have minor complaints about the game all day. Is it going to change my opinion on the fact that I think it's great? <laughs> By no means. Like, there are a lot of things I myself would have done differently with the game if I had some kind of creative directive to it. But even then, to that point, I'm not a game developer. I don't, you know, know much about game development myself either. I leave that to them and just kind of acknowledge the fact that it's a game I enjoy playing. But if you happen to have a Nintendo Switch, a PS4, an Xbox One, a Series X or Series S, or even a PS5, I'd recommend going and pick up a copy of Nitro Fueled. You can get either the version of the Nitro, you can get either the Nitro Oxide version or the regular version. And like I said, the games are completely similar in every aspect. Just an extra stock version with a couple of extra unlocks available to you and in a version exclusive skin. For a character you're probably not going to play much of anyway. Because you can be any character in the game with any engine that you want to. When the engine swap came out, that pretty much killed the idea of having a diverse cast. Like, that's the way I kind of felt about the whole thing. But yeah, you're free to have any kind of opinion you'd like. And I recommend that you pick up the game if you really enjoy Crash Team Racing, if you really enjoy Crash Bandicoot games. But if you want to feel for something that's different than Mario Kart as well. It does take a little bit of take a little bit of time to understand the handling of the game because there is a drift boost mechanic thing that is different than Mario Karts. But all together it's an awesome game. It's worth every penny you're gonna drop into this buying the game either by disc or by digital and until the next episode where, I'm, where we're actually going to be doing our first actual fucking cartridge based cartridge based game I am Beagle3280 and I'm out alrighty so if you actually stuck to the very end of this video thank you uh, yeah here's some like uh, some gameplay uh, some bits and tips I don't I'll be doing every single track because not every track has a has a trick to it that I can really show. The first one we'll be doing is Blizzard Bluff, or no, Polar Pass, Polar Pass, not Blizzard Bluff. 
Uh, we'll be playing as Mega Mix just because I can. Yeah, it's Polar Pass. Uh, I believe Polar Pass is the uh, is the one with this really really tricky one. So there is a shortcut that took me forever to figure out. I think I'm playing this on racing mode. It doesn't matter. You can use this racing mode. You can use it on uh, time trial modes. But this shortcut took me a long time to master. Because it's one of the most... The shortcut's one of the most annoying shortcuts in this fucking game. Legit. I took so long to learn how to do this. Uh, so it's coming up here, right here. Uh, okay. It's easier to do on time trial mode because you don't have a lot of these racers. But yeah, that's the shortcut. You have to be able to learn how to do that if you want to beat Oxide. <laughs> it's also recommended to do it against Entropy because if you can, like, outlap his ass by going that quickly, you can just pretty much show him who's boss. That took me, no joke, nearly... Two months to learn how to do that to beat Oxide's Ghost on time trial mode on my Switch version. I did recently do it on my PS4. It's not super insanely difficult to do, but it is. It's not. Ins it's not insanely. It's insanely impossible to do. It's just a fucking bitch to learn. Because the problem is you got to know how long to air break and you have to know how fast to turn. Because if you don't, you're going to get, you know, thrown in the water over and over and over. And the worst part about the Oxide Ghost, you have to do that shortcut three times in a row. Flawlessly. If you want to have an even a remotely have a chance to beat that Oxide Ghost. you got to do that three fucking times. So it's definitely recommended that you uh, go on the uh, time trial mode and at least practice that jump. Like, even if you're not doing for Entropy's grind and the Entropy Ghosts, just practice the jump, and as soon as you master it, do Entropy, and then go and do Oxide real fast. As far as Velo, you're under fucking O. I do not know any strategies to beat the Velo Ghosts. I've never done it before, like I said, and I don't plan to do it unless people really, really want it to happen. And even the devs. But, like I said, I have to have enough fan demand to want it. I might even set some goals for, like, certain things. Like, check the description box if I remember to even, you know, do anything with the description box when I upload this. But I will set some, like, goals on what I want to meet to get certain things, criteria for, met for this. Like, I know the first one's definitely going to be, like, a like goal. The other one might be like some, like a, uh, either a like or a, you know, comic goal. And then for Velo, it's probably going to be a, a coffee goal. Like I had to get so many coffees or I had to have so many coffee memberships requesting me to do that. Because as a coffee $5 member, you can request for me to do stuff. And for a coffee $1, you can see all these videos one month early. But there's your plug for the fucking video. <laughs> Yeah, Mega Mix is kind of fucked. <laughs> uh, I do like how weekends, uh, it's double one point weekends. Another thing that's annoying is you have to have online to play this all the time. Anyway, sorry about that burp there. Uh, we got like Blizzard Bluff has a yeah, Blizzard Bluff has a really annoying shortcut too. You're going to want to practice this one as well, because I believe you need to learn how to do this one to be able to do Oxide's Ghosts. Entropy's Ghost, I'm not sure of, but Oxide's for sure. You need to do this one for Oxide. Uh, this jump is also required in time. Well, Caddy mentions this track as being hard for Relic Races. But I, I said I haven't done all the like, races for Platinums because I am not a masochist. 
or enough of one at least, to do that. Uh, you need to have a, a good amount of speed before you go up here to do this jump, by the way. Yeah, just barely fucking miss the jump and you can get thrown back over here to start over again. Not start over again, but you know what I mean. There's another, like, little tidbit thing of the shortcut that I'm going to try to get. But it's another thing you might have to learn how to do if you want to beat the ghosts. There's a little jump. So this Golden Wumpa here is a neat little thing they added in one of the later updates. I think it was because uh, it was inspired by Nina's Nightmare. Because in Nina's Nightmare there's some uh, ghosts that appear inside the, the crates. And you have to chase them down. Uh, it used to be like a mission to chase him down, but I think they probably added the Golden Wumpa in reference to that. So you have to chase the Golden Wumpa across the track and catch it in order for you to get 200 free Wumpa coins. Wumpa coins are kind of needed to do stuff in this game. Not really needed to do stuff, but are like, they're needed to get stuff like uh, skins and cart customization options and characters. And the best part is that they're an in-game currency, so it's not like you have to, like, premium buy them. But I'm going to get this shortcut. I did miss up the Gold Wumpa, but it appears every couple of races. Let's try this again. Another thing is that the, the game does have a couple other options, which I'll be showing off here in just a sec. It's one the oh there you go, that's how you do that jump. There's another one up here. Uh if you I don't know if you need to learn how to do that one for oxide. I think he does it once or twice. I cannot be certain because like I said, it's been years since I've done these time trials again. So I could be wrong as all hell. But I do know that this jump is required to learn. To do oxide's ghosts. Maybe even in Trippy's Ghosts, I don't remember. But I know that they, it is one of the most annoying jumps in this fucking game. I'll put it that way. Like, I thought it was ass... I thought that fucking ass cheek clenching for fucking Death Junior was spinning glides and Crash 3 was bad. Try learning to ass cheek clinch jump that motherfucker consistently three times in one lap. Three times in one race. It takes a long, long time. It's lots and lots of practice. But you can do it. I've done it at least once. So uh, that's good enough for me. There might have been actually been a second fence posting over now that I think about it. Another fence post over there that I think about it. Uh, you could have just done. But anyways, if you get through all that, you can do the... You can do that with that. That little trick there, I think, get that ghost. Um, for other things, I showed you guys how to do Electron Avenues. Uh, I don't think Hotter Skyway has one. Engine Lab doesn't have one. Or Oxide Station. I can't really give any advice on those. Uh, I think I can get... I, there is a shortcut here on Clockwork Wumpa. But I don't know if it saves time. Or required for any of the ghosts. But this track is definitely a lot fucking different from its original counterpart. Because this was also around the time when I was bad at video games. Which hasn't changed much. But uh, I could not beat. I could not beat Entropy's ghost on this fucking track. Of course I was also really slow and didn't know how to do the drip boosting thing very very well. But I won't stress about it too much, I guess. But Clockwork Wampa does have a couple of shortcuts, I think. There's at least one or two shortcuts I know of. <laughs> he ran right into me and said, Drop that. The other thing about uh, Nitro Fuel that I don't really care the most for is its items. 
Titan Selection is kind of like meh in comparison to like Nitro Kart or not Nitro Kart uh, as in comparison to Mario Kart like Nitro Kart does have some mediocre items as well there's also the thing in Nitro Kart for Frenzy Mode where it requires you to like because the thing about Nitro Kart is that it was kind of based around the idea of teams because uh, every race no matter who you pick, you had like a teammate. Like if you were playing on campaign mode and you played with Crunch, your teammate would be Coco or Crash. And as you guys stood, like drove in place with next to each other, like if Crash was in second and you were in first and you guys were nearby, uh, you would have a meter fill up. And as your meter filled, you would get an insane amount of items really, really quickly. And uh, another thing that was also kind of like annoying was uh your teammates were always protected by all your items so if you try to hit your teammate with a missile because they're in first place uh they'd be protected by that missile because you can't attack your friends uh i don't know if frenzy mode was a thing in multiplayer mode because i never got to play a lot of multiplayer for two reasons one is because nobody like playing games with me and the other reason is because um My PlayStation 2, uh, it's, uh, controller port 2 thing is kind of messed up. And it only plays on my original PlayStation 2, not on my Slim. Which my dad found in a trash can and it still worked. <laughs> uh, yeah, there, there's a Clockwork Wampa's shortcuts there. Uh, I think there's at least... Two other ones I can really give advice on. As far as that goes without having to like, you know, show short without having to show without showing shortcuts, I mean. Uh so deep sea driving is one I can give you advice on. I won't be doing the entirety of this track, like all three laps, I'll only be doing like one to show you guys some like stuff. Here we go with keeps driving. Yeah, so that's a, a fucked up thing about Mega Mix's voice lines. Is that they're literally just like a mixture of Tiny Cortex and Engine. Not so much Dingo Dial. But yeah, like here's a shortcut here. I'm not sure if that thing I did there is even able to be consistent. Uh, but my best advice is to try to drift and not hit any of those because that's how you get perfect laps like that. And now that I think about it, I think I might just finish it up because I'm doing pretty fast in this course right now. Nowhere near like world record paces for the course or anything. Oh shit. Not that I was going for a world record or anything because. God knows I'd be too damn slow for one of those. Hey, I did it consistently. At least twice. Oh, yeah, that's... That always looks fucking great. Of course, this track was also kind of hard for me on the original... On Nitro Kart as it was anyway. But I am able to actually do this whole track flawlessly. I've done it before on my Switch version at least a handful of times. I have... Friends that witnesses the I have wit friends that witnessed it to even you know prove it. If you're doing the uh, time trial ghosts or the time trials, uh, my best bit of advice for you is to take the uh, the left side there. Like you're going off road and you're going to be kind of slow and it looks like it would not be optimal, but trust me, it is one of the most optimal ways of getting fast time trials in this in this track. So I used to be able to jump. On that section there, a little jump and curve, and then boom. Kind of like I was doing on the first two laps there. Yeah, like I said, I wouldn't be showing off all the laps, but I'll be doing the time trials here. I won't be racing any of the ghosts because I want to save it just in case. 
I'll be making a new profile completely. There's that, and I kind of want to do this on my own time. Try to train for my Dede Oxide grind if I have to. A uh, Titan Temple is do the whole track with Nitro with uh, your Sapphire, Sapphire Flames. Pretty easy. Feed your Gorge. There's one shortcut, which when I do the shortcut, I'll just turn it off from that track and then go to something new. Uh, I won't be showing any of the bonus tracks because I never I haven't done all of their Entropy Ghost or their Oxide Ghosts either. I've done one. That's about it. My main problem is because Drive Through Danger is on there. And I fucking hate that track so much. The final one of the game. Final update for the game as far as Grand Prix go. Which I'll be talking about Grand I think I talked about Grand Prix uh, in the voice section. But if I, in case I don't, because like I said, I, I wasn't. I didn't watch the voice sections before I did these. If I don't talk about it in the voice sections, there's your shortcut for Baron's. Uh, for Meteor Gorge, by the way. Uh, I don't talk about the voice sections. Like, there was a thing where you would race and do challenges to get Nitro. And that Nitro would, like, add together to make into, like, collect a character. And Mega Mix was one of these characters in the Nitro pool. Um, Hasty was one. I believe Tana was the first ever ones. Alright, so here's Out of Time. This shortcut is a pain in the ass to master. I don't even get this consistently. Well, I mean, I haven't really mastered either. But essentially, you, what you have to do is you have to be able to jump over that fence. You would not think a fucking jump like that would save you any time. But no, it is required... For you to do it, to even, I think, even beat the Entropy Ghost. Literally, even Entropy, the easiest ghosts to beat in this game, can fucking do this shortcut. Like that. It's honestly not that hard when you figure out what you have to do. It's kind of like the Sewer Speedway shortcut, which... I think I might go back and show that one, but the whole thing was Sewer Speedway shortcut... Is that it requires you to be at a certain angle. I mean, I'm going to like show this other shortcut here. I don't want to like take up all the time and video doing three laps on every course. That's why I didn't... That's why I chose to do restart instead of quitting. Or I mean, instead of doing another lap or whatever. Yeah, once you learn how to do that shortcut, it's not that fucking hard. It's, you'll be able to do it like muscle memory. Like you're not even in attempting to do an oxide ghost and just muscle memory it. <laughs> Alright, so this is another shortcut here. Alright, just because, oh shit. I don't want to restart, I want to fucking leave this course. Yeah, it's it's really really kind of easy to do that one when you finally you know figure it out. Uh, assembly lane I don't think has any shortcuts or any advice I can give you. Hyperspaceway has one shortcut. Uh, let me see if I can do this one consistently. By that I mean if I can do it again because I did it before when I was fucking around with uh, my sisters. Baby daddy's niece and nephew. Um, we were fucking around playing Nitro Kart. And I taught them how to do this. I showed them how to do, you know, play the game a little more. Because they were, they were playing it one day when I come home from work. Which, like I said, I don't really give a shit because that just gives me more coins for unlocks. And I will always, always let other people grind my coins if they want to. <laughs> Uh, fuck. That's how you do that shortcut there. And then the rest of it, you just gotta, you know, do it natural. Just full send.
Wouldn't it be hilarious if I somehow beat the Oxide Ghost without even trying to do the Oxide Ghost? Because that's another stupid thing about time trials, too. Is that if you beat a, a ghost's time before you, like, race it, it doesn't uh, beat the ghost automatically. You have to, like, literally race the ghost and do it all over again. Just as I say, I'm about to beat the Oxide Ghost this fucking time and I fucking spin out because of that stupid laser. That's another thing that really kind of, like, got me when I played Nitro Kart when I was younger. Was that, like, laser eye thing always tripped me up during the dealer race. Always. That Velo race took me forever to do on for both sides. Because the problem is, is that when you do the Velo ghosts, you have to do... You have to, uh, no, when you do the Velo races, you have to beat them with both uh, Team Bandicoot and Team Cortex to get the, like, true ending that unlocks it for a Velo. As a playable racer. But what's really annoying about it is, is the fact that, like, it takes a long time to do it. And I legit spent months trying to do that fucking race because those stupid things there there's that in nitro carts driving style your cart is very very bouncy and slippery and it's definitely is an oxide time ghost or oxide time race here i think i went way too fucking slow because i kept spinning out but your cart controls are a lot more bouncy here A lot more bouncier, so it makes things a lot harder to play the game. These are like a lot more tighter, and there's also no anti gravity. Yeah, that's the whole thing with hyperspace way there. Oh, what's the velo time? Oh, that's the uh, oxide time anyway. Oh, uh, my first fuck. I even had that race. I did two tw uh, two twenty eight, and I still got faster than oxide. <laughs> oh, it's fucking awesome. But um. Yeah, I think with Oxide Grind too, I'm going to make an incentive to like do all the bonus tracks as well. So it's like Coliseum and Turbo Track are also part of this. These aren't terrible tracks. Uh, Roost Tubes took me a while to figure out its thing. I'll show you guys because it required me to do a whole lap to do it. And then I'll show Sewer Speedway. That'll be the final thing before I just, you know, kind of get my sign off for the video. But yeah, like I said, uh, the the incentives and shit will be in the description if I remember to put them in when I finally get this video uploaded and ready to uh, ready to get this video sent over to my editor and ready to upload and whatever, you know. But uh, to do the oxide, uh, yeah, the oxide ghost on Roost tubes, you don't want to do that. Fuck me. Um, what you want to do is you want to have a good amount of speed throughout the first lap. And you want to try to keep this speed going as you do the course. I can't fucking drift boost to save my life because I'm recording myself doing it. That's why. The other thing about Mega Mix I don't understand is that in Mega Mix Mania, it does not matter what your affiliation is, because with the masks, there's a couple of different mask characters you get, like um, the uh, Nitro Fuel, uh, the Nitro Kart bosses, all get uh, Velo masks. All the evil characters get Aku Aku. No, they get Uka Uka. All the heroes get Aku Aku. And all the spiral characters get Sparks. But, for whatever reason... On uh, the map, Mega Mix Mania, it does not matter who your affiliation is with your side for your masks. Everyone's character gets Apu Apu, and we don't even know anything about Apu Apu at all. We just know he kind of exists and is somehow a reincarnation of Aku Aku and Uka Uka. And I beat my best time on fucking Roost Tubes. But yeah, you have to like do that little trick there at the end with that ribcage I showed you. 
If you do that all three laps and you have a consistent amount of speed throughout the entirety of the thing, you should be able to whoop Oxide's ass easily. But yeah, that's it for this video. Like I said, keep an eye out for incentives and I might, you know, fulfill them. Uh, if I can end up demand. Thanks again for watching. Have a nice night or day, every time you're watching this.